Hey guys, it's Kisera, and today I'm gonna to be doing my August reading wrap up. So I'm filming this video a little bit early due to Hurricane Dorian, which is coming towards Florida probably on Monday, which is the day that this video is gonna be coming out, but I have to do preparations and I'm evacuating to my parents' house during this time so that I'm not gonna have time to film this later. So there are gonna be some books that I read in the month of August that are not gonna be on this video. I will just be putting those in my September wrap up. So you can look forward to those books in my September wrap up. As always, I want to start out with some of my stats and goals. So for the month of August, I ended up reading 23 books, which is a lot. That is so, so much. I knew it was gonna be a good reading month, but I didn't know it was gonna be that good. Fun fact, if you've been watching my vlogs, then you'll know I finished my audiobook TBR like super early on in the month. So I was just like listening to random audiobooks towards the end of the month. So yeah, that happened also, but read a lot in the month of August. So we're gonna start with the categories of these books. So I read three contemporary books, 15 fantasy books, three sci-fi books, one historical fiction book, one mystery slash thriller novel, and one classic. As for star rating, I had an average star rating of 4.1 stars, which I think is pretty decent, but not that good, because I try to have my star rating average be like above a 4.5, which means like I really, really enjoyed all of the books that I read this month, but 4.1 one is still decent. It just means that there were a lot of four star books this month, which are really good, but at the same time, I didn't overly love them. Which, I mean, usually is what happens when I listen to a lot of audiobooks because they're books that I didn't physically buy. So they're, they're not necessarily books that I'm expecting to absolutely love. I ended up having six five star books, six four and a half star books, nine four star books, one three and a half star book, and one three star book. So like only one three and a half and one three star book. So that's actually really good because I didn't have any two star books or one star books, which is really good. I very rarely have one and two star books, but at the same time, like if I can have a month with none of them, then that's fantastic. For age range, I read 16 adult books, six young adult books, and one middle grade. As for page count, I'll put a little chart on the screen for you guys, but my average page count was 440 pages, which is pretty high. I feel like that's pretty decent because most books are like between 200 and 300 and 440, like, that means I was reading a lot of the bigger books. So I'm really happy with that. Then we have my physical to audiobook ratio, which you guys are gonna see why I read this much this month, because I only read six physical books, one ebook, and 16 audiobooks. That's a lot. Yeah. I try to shoot for like that 50-50 ratio between physical and audiobook, and that just didn't happen this month. Like it was not happening. I just didn't have any time for physical books, but like I had so much time for audiobooks. And like, I read a lot of audiobooks, or I listened to a lot of audiobooks this month, and I absolutely loved him, but yeah, that's what happened. Now we're gonna move on to my goals. So I have goals to read one classic, one sci-fi, one historical fiction, one mystery slash thriller novel, and one book over 700 pages. My classic for the month was Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. For science fiction, I read A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. For historical fiction, I read Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. For my mystery slash thriller novel, I read The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson. For my book over 700 pages, I read The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. So I will be talking about all of those books a little bit more in the second half of this video. The next goal I usually have for the month is to read at least eight physical books which I read six physical books, if we're counting ebooks in that, which I usually do combine the physical and ebook ratio. For that, I ended up reading seven, which is not great. So yeah, I was very close to that eight, but I didn't quite get there. And the last goal that I have to talk about is my book buying ban challenge, which I made a huge dent in this month because I ended up reading nine books from that challenge. So these are the nine books that I ended up reading for that challenge. And I will be talking about all of these a little bit later on in the video. Next, I usually talk about my rereads for the month. And I did end up rereading two books this month. The first one is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This one was the one that won the poll for me to reread a book. And I actually did a full review for this one. So I will link that one up in the cards for you guys if you want to check that out. But I really enjoyed this book. This is one of my favorites of all time. 
particularly the audiobook. I absolutely love the audiobook because I just love the way that it's produced and the writing style in this book is fantastic. Like so, so good. This is like probably my favorite author's writing style that I've ever read. As far as the story goes, like it's not my favorite, but like the writing makes it so good. It's basically about two people who are in this sort of contest of magical wills basically and it's very ambiguous because you're not really sure what they have to do to win the contest other than perform some feats of magic and the setting for this contest is the night circus so they basically end up building the circus with their magic which is really cool and i really enjoy it the next book that i ended up rereading this month is the dragon reborn by robert jordan this is the third book in the wheel of time series which is one of my favorite series like of all time and i absolutely enjoyed it this is like one of my favorite books in the series i don't know why like it just is like it's it's so good. For those of you who know anything about this series, this is the book where we finally get an introduction to the Aiel, which are my favorite, and I'm so excited to continue on and read the next book in this one. So this is like part of my nighttime rereads, in case you were wondering. I listen to an audiobook for about 30 minutes at night before I go to bed. I prefer to do it as a reread rather than a book that I'm currently reading on audio because I have a harder time in the morning figuring out where I left off from where the book was playing versus where I fell asleep. There is a sleep timer on it, but I generally fall asleep before it goes off, so yes. But I really, really enjoy this one and I'm excited to continue on with the series. It's like one of my favorites and it's gonna probably take me into the next year because it's huge. Really, really love this one and I gave this one five stars also. I didn't read any nonfiction this month, but I did have a DNF. So we're gonna talk about that DNF. So officially DNF The Last Namsara by Kristen Cincerelli, which makes me sad because this was one of my book buying band challenge books and I really wanted to read it. So with this one, it's not that I didn't try. I did try to read this book multiple times. Like before I even bought this book, I picked up the audiobook from my library, really didn't like the audiobook. So I decided to pick up the physical book from Book Outlet because it was available at the time. I tried this book when I first bought it and I got like a couple pages in, was kind of bored didn't read it. Then I had the try a chapter tag. I was really intrigued by the first chapter. Didn't end up picking this book for that tag. I tried to read it later on in the month. Didn't end up liking it. And then this month I picked it up again. I got six chapters in and it just like it wasn't vibing with me. For some reason this one just wasn't vibing with me. So I feel like I've tried this book four times now. It's just not working out. And so it's gonna be a DNF. I haven't decided if I'm gonna unhaul it yet. I might still try and read it again sometime in the future, just not anytime soon. If you like this book though, let me know down in the comments because I need some encouragement to actually read this one because I don't know why, it's just not working for me. I really like the premise of this book because it's about the main character who has to basically slay a dragon which I guess is not that original if you think about it. But she's a princess and she is not very well looked upon because she does things that ends up like bringing out the wrath in dragons. So she wants to slay the dragon so that she win the hearts of her people basically and apologize for the disaster that she was before, which is great. And I love the idea of this, but every time I pick it up, I'm just like, I'm so bored. So that's how I feel about it. Now we're gonna get to all of the books that I read for the first time this month and really, really enjoyed. I'm gonna start with my lowest rated book and work my way up to my highest rated book. So we're gonna start with the book that I rated three stars and that is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. So this is a YA read. This is following a character named Lei who is taken from her home to become a paper girl, which is basically like one of the king's courtesans. I enjoyed the world. I really enjoyed the world. I love the world building in this, but the main character really, really annoyed me. There is kind of this like side love story going on, which I wanted to like, like I always wanted to like, I tried to root for it, but I just felt like it felt a little forced to me. And just overall, like I didn't end up getting as into the story as I really wanted to. Like I was really excited for this book because the premise seems really good and I really like the idea of it. But in execution, I just really didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. And I really didn't like the audiobook either. Like this is another one of those where like if I had the physical copy or if I wasn't on a book buying ban, I would have bought a physical copy so that I wouldn't have to listen to the audiobook because I just really, really didn't like the audiobook. But I 
push through because I'm on a book buying ban, like I said. And I'm pretty glad I didn't buy a physical book because I really didn't end up enjoying it as much as I was hoping for. The ending was really good though, I have to say. I did really, really enjoy the ending, except for the epilogue. I didn't like the epilogue. But overall, like, I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. Like, it's a good book and I know plenty of people probably love it, but I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, so I ended up giving it three stars. So next we're going to move on to the book that I rated three and a half stars, and that is An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. I actually really enjoyed this book, like a lot more than I was expecting to from the beginning of it. So this book is about a magical contest also, and it's following quite a few different characters, but there is an outsider basically who has joined this contest. And basically the contest is between a bunch of different houses in the Unseen World, and the house that wins ends up basically ruling the Unseen World. So it's very high stakes. Like at the end, the later contest ones, to win the contest, you actually have to kill your opponent. So yeah, there's a lot of action and it's really good and I really like the idea of this book. I really like the world building here also. There are a few things that I just didn't like about the book very much. The writing really, really annoyed me in this book. Just the way the imagery was done, I felt like it was very ambiguous and I had a hard time picturing what was happening. I kind of had to change the way that I read in order to read this book because I read this book to myself out loud because I wanted to listen to the audiobook basically, but I didn't like the audiobook. So I ended up making my own audiobook, sort of. If I read this book without speaking the words, I would just get really annoyed by the words themselves because they were annoying, but the story I really, really enjoyed. So I didn't like the writing, but I really, really liked the story. I enjoyed this story so much that I wanted to give it like a four and a half star. And if I had liked the writing, it probably would have been a five star book. But the writing for me just didn't jive with me so much that I had to give it three and a half stars because I had to change the way that I read in order to enjoy this book, if that makes sense. But overall, like, it's a very fast paced plot that's really interesting. The one other thing that I was a little bit disappointed by in this book was the characters because you didn't really get to know the characters that much. By the end of the book, I found myself liking these characters but I wanted to like them in the beginning of the book also. Like I didn't have any characters to attach myself to at the beginning of the book, but by the end of the book, I really liked them. And I feel like in a reread, I'll end up really liking these characters. But for a first time around, I didn't really like them as much as I wanted to. Now we're gonna move on to the books that I rated four stars. The first one I wanna talk about is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. So I ended up picking up the audiobook for this one, which by the way, I highly recommend the audiobook. I really, really loved the audiobook. It is narrated by Michael Kramer, who also narrates the Wheel of Time series. I actually liked him a lot better in The Grace of Kings than in the Wheel of Time series, but like, it was a really, really good audiobook. This is following actually quite a few different main characters. It's set in the world where there's a bunch of different kingdoms that are kind of like always at war with each other and it's following several different characters who are basically part of this political situation. I had a lot of difficulty with like the first half of this book. The characters, the way they're written in here, I never really got attached to them except for like one of them in particular and at the very beginning, the first like half of this book, it would switch characters so often and it would be just like in very different situations like by the time I got attached to one of the characters and one of the threads of the story it would skip to another character in another time in a completely different like story thread so I had difficulty just getting attached to the book in the first half and I feel like if I didn't have the audiobook I might have ended up DNFing it I did really really like the second half of the book that being said like up until the very, very end. I was pretty sure I was gonna give this book three and a half stars. I really, really loved the way the ending played out, which bumped it up to four stars. Like it was fantastically done. And I'm excited to see what happens in the next book because of the ending of this one. But like through the first 90% of this book, it wasn't gonna be a four star book for me. Basically one, because of that first half of the book was really difficult to attach myself to. And then the second half of the book was all based on a particular conflict that happens like in the middle of the book and I didn't like the way that conflict was done. Everything after that I enjoyed. Like everything after that conflict I enjoyed but everything after that conflict also hinged particularly on that conflict which I just didn't like the way it was done. So yes, there's that. 
but the ending was so good. If I didn't have so many problems with the book before that ending, that ending could have bumped it up to like a five star book in my opinion because it was so so well done and I really enjoyed it. I had so many other problems with this book that I I couldn't give it anything more than four stars, but I did really really enjoy it. Also, this one is also an Asian inspired fantasy. I didn't really see a whole lot of fantasy going on until like the very end because there's like epilogues and stuff after like the ending that I said that was amazing and that's when I started seeing like more fantasy elements to it but before that I really wasn't sure if this was supposed to be fantasy or not because it didn't really feel like that so yeah there's that also. The next book I want to talk about is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. So this book was really interesting. I really didn't know where this book was going at the very beginning because the book was talking basically about the atomic bombs and like the human side of the atomic bombs at the very beginning and then it turns into a dystopian novel like I don't know how that happened but I loved that that happened and kind of the themes that this book goes over I really really enjoyed it I ended up giving it four stars I'm excited to see more by Vonnegut because he has some interesting writing and it had some really interesting characters in here that I found very funny at times and I really enjoyed it. it. It's not my favorite. There were parts of it that I was just like, what is going on? But overall, I enjoyed reading it. And I'll, I'll enjoy doing this as a reread in the future sometime and analyzing it more. But for the first time around, I enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four stars. The next book that I'd like to talk about is Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This is the second book in the Queen of the Tearling series. I really enjoyed the Queen of the Tearling and I was really excited for Invasion of the Tearling. I was really hoping that I could end up giving Invasion of the Tearling five stars just because it had such a good setup at the end of Queen of the Tearling. And then I got into Invasion of the Tearling and it wasn't at all what I was expecting like it was completely outside the box of what I was expecting because it's following some characters that I didn't even know existed before and I was really hoping for some really good action with you know an invasion wasn't really there like there was some action but like I just felt like that part was just like a little too easy in this novel and there could have definitely been more action but the other characters that this follows I don't want to say too much just because spoilers since this is the second book in the series there was another storyline that I found really really interesting like it took it, it was jarring at first because it took me kind of like outside of the main storyline that I was expecting you get some like really good backstory here for like the world and why it is the way that it is and I'm really excited to see where it goes in the next book in this series but I ended up giving this one four stars. The next book that I like to talk about is A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. I ended up liking this one a little bit more than I was expecting to because I didn't expect to like this one as much as I did. I think part of the reason why is this one has been recommended to me because I like the many worlds trope or the multiple worlds trope and this is one that does it and you don't really get too many books that do that trope and this is one of the series that really does this trope but I really haven't heard anyone read the series and end up liking the series so I was expecting like not to like it but I guess I know myself because I ended up really really enjoying it. So it's about a girl named Marguerite Kane whose parents created this device called the Firebird which allows people to basically jump into different dimensions but they jump into the bodies of their selves in those other dimensions. So for example one of the jumps that she does she ends up being like a Russian princess in that jump which I just thought was really cool the way that it was done and I really really enjoyed like that technical aspect of it. That being said, there is a good chunk of this book that is not the like sciencey side that is more related to like YA romance side which I didn't enjoy that as much as I was hoping to. I do feel like I want to root for the couple though and I'm excited to see where it goes in the next book but I was just, I wanted more of the sciency and the world building side of this book. So much of this book was just dedicated to the romance. And oh, there's good action, especially at the end too. I really like the action at the end. And I like the mysteries that are woven throughout this one. That's what really surprised me about this book because I didn't expect it to have like those kind of mysteries and like just the subtle hints and clues of those mysteries. I like the way that it was done and I really enjoyed the revelations. So the next book that I like to talk about is Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. This is the sequel to Firefly Lane also by Kristen Hanna. It's one of my like newer favorite authors that I like reading because she writes a fantastic character relationships and that's kind of why I read this book because Firefly Lane is about two best friends who basically like 
go through their lives together and it's about their relationship and how it changes over time and something happens at the end of Firefly Lane that really really impacts their friendship so I was excited to see how all of that continues on in Fly Away and I did really really enjoy Fly Away also I enjoyed the direction that Fly Away ended up going and this one ended up being a lot more heartbreaking than I was expecting it to be I was expecting this one to be a little bit more uplifting than like the heart-wrenching stuff that happens in Firefly Lane but then this one was just like very depressing the entire time but like I enjoyed that it was depressing which is like weird but it was it was good and I really really enjoyed it and ended up giving it four stars the next book that I like to talk about is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw so this book is following the Swan Sisters which are three sisters who were drowned as witches in 1823 I believe and since then they've come back every summer and possessed a girl's body so that they can drown boys. I just loved the intrigue in this because there's this mystery aspect to it where you're trying to figure out which girls are being possessed by the Swan Sisters and then there's this other aspect where you're like kind of worried about the boys and seeing who's gonna get killed and stuff like that and it was really good. I did enjoy the very beginning of that intrigue and I enjoyed the really ending where the, all of the action occurred, well most of the action occurred. I did have a little difficulty with the middle because the middle again is one of those where it's very heavily romance focused. While I did really like the couple, I just thought that it happened too fast. Like I felt like there wasn't enough detail to back up the emotions that were being portrayed there but overall really really enjoyed this one and I ended up giving it four stars also I absolutely love this cover it's so gorgeous oh and the naked book is also super gorgeous like I really really love this naked book which I showed off a lot in my reading vlog so you guys can check that out. But yeah, definitely a really good book and definitely worth the read. So the next book that I want to talk about is The Bone Chips by R.J. Barker. So I got an e-arc of this book from NetGalley. I really, really enjoyed this book. So this book is the first book in a new fantasy series and it's set in the Hundred Isles, which is like this archipelago society. And the people build these ships out of bones of dragons basically, which are extinct. But at the beginning of the story, our main characters learn of a dragon that is not extinct and basically go off on this quest to find it. I really, really like maritime fantasy novels, so I really, really loved like just that atmosphere and the world is so, so well built. Like there's so much depth to this world and just like the terminology and stuff that is being used. I really, really enjoyed that and it kind of throws you into the world and you feel like you're just like, a part of it and you're figuring out what's happening as you're part of this world so I really love that aspect of it and I enjoyed the characters as well I am gonna be doing a full review for this book closer to the release date because it's being released on September 24th so look out for that review it should be coming in a couple of weeks so the next book that I like to talk about is The Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks this is the fourth book in the Lightbringer series, which I have been talking about the series since last December. So you guys know I love this series and you guys know why I love this series. I love this world. I love these characters. They're unlikable characters. They're very gray, but I love the way that they're done. And I love just like the pacing of this book is so, so fast paced. That being said, this was my least favorite of the series. Like plot wise, the books never quite live up to what I want them to live up to plot wise. And this one is no exception. I just felt like in the end, nothing really happened in this book. Like there were a lot of really good revelations that made me think about what's gonna happen next. And there was like a lot of setup and putting characters like in place but for the actual action of the story i just felt like it wasn't really there that being said i just enjoyed being in this world so much that i can't give it anything less than four stars like i just enjoyed the experience of reading so much so while i can't give it anything higher than four stars because nothing happened i also can't give it anything lower because i just enjoyed all the nothingness that happened if that makes sense I don't know if I made any sense with this like mini review, but I really love this series, even if I don't love this book. And I'm super excited to read the next book in this series because The Burning White is coming out, I believe in October. And I'm so excited for it. Like you have no idea how excited for it because I have a feeling it's gonna be really good. I really hope it's gonna be really good anyway. So yeah, 
ended up giving this one four stars. And the next book that I want to talk about is The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski. I enjoyed this one a lot more than I was expecting to. First of all, really, really enjoyed the audiobook. It was such a good audiobook, fantastically produced. And I also really like the writing in this book. Mind you, this is a series of short stories which is introducing The Witcher. So like it's like the first series of short stories in The Witcher series. And I didn't know anything about The Witcher series before this. But basically it's about the, the Witcher who kills monsters. That's what he does. So it's like different stories of monsters that he killed. So it reminded me kind of like the early seasons of Supernatural, which I also enjoyed. But like I enjoyed this more than that and I'm excited to see more of this world because it's an interesting world. So far I really really like the writing. I like the character of the Witcher so I've heard only good things about the Witcher series so I'm excited to see more from it and I probably would have given this one more than four stars if I felt like there was like more of a connected plot because I'm all about the long game and this is short stories so it's definitely short game. So it's just like, it wasn't my style, but overall I did really, really enjoy reading. So now we're gonna move on to books that I rated four and a half stars. So the first book that I wanna talk about is The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen. So this book is following the main character of Emma Saylor, whose father is going on his honeymoon. So she has to find a place to stay while he's gone. And they end up putting her with her maternal grandmother, who she has been estranged from for a very long time. And she's kind of thrown into this really big family that she's never really been a part of before, but she's kind of learning her mother's history and her past and things like that. I really enjoyed it. Like, I don't know what it is about Sarah Dustin books, but for some reason, every time I pick one up, I just get super into it. I think there's a lot of complexity to the story that just draws me in and I end up really enjoying every second of it. I also really, really, really like the ending of this book because there is a lot of good action at the ending of this book. And like the action was very relevant to like things that are like going on in my life right now, which I really enjoyed that like it just came to me at the right time, I felt like, and I enjoyed it. So I ended up giving it four and a half stars. So the next book that I wanna talk about is The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. So I ended up reading the second novel in the His Dark Materials series. I ended up really, really liking it because we finally get like a little bit more insight into like worlds and stuff like that because there are multiple worlds that we visit in this story. And we also get introduced to a new main character named Will, who I really enjoyed. I still really like Lyra and like Pantalaimon. Oh my gosh, I love Pantalaimon. But we get like more introduction into like how the different worlds are situated and things like that. And I just really like that aspect of it. So I ended up really, really enjoying The Subtle Knife even more so than The Golden Compass. And I'm so excited to read The Amber Spyglass. You have no idea. So, so excited for it. So really, really enjoyed it and ended up giving it 4.5 stars. So the next book I wanna talk about is The Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman. So I kind of picked this one up on a little bit of a whim, but like Frederick Bachman is one of those authors that I just wanna read all of the books that he writes. And it's a novella and the audiobook is only 47 minutes. Like it's super short, like super, super short. Somehow Frederick Bachman manages to pack so much in to such a short book. And it did feel like a Christmas book because I mean, there's a Christmas tree on the cover. So obviously like you expect it to be a Christmas book, but it had kind of like that holiday spirit, uh, like sort of like a Christmas story. I don't want to say too much about it just because it's so short that it's like kind of hard to not give away spoilers, but it's about basically this businessman, basically he spent his whole life gaining wealth and it didn't really go exactly into what he did, but he was one of those like big money sort of people and he gets diagnosed with cancer and a lot of things happen and it was really good. I really, really liked like the themes that it explored and things like that. And it's kind of a weird book, but like in a good way and I really ended up enjoying it. So the next book that I'd like to talk about is Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson. So this is the first book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series. For those of you who don't know, it's a really popular high fantasy series that's like 10 novels long, and it's also super intimidating just because it's one of those series that like kind of throws you into this world and doesn't tell you anything about it, and you kind of have like to figure out what's going on as you're reading, which I actually really, really enjoyed that aspect of it, which I didn't know if I would. I didn't know if I would love that, 
but I ended up really enjoying that and I did get attached to a lot of these characters. There's tons of characters. There's this huge world and I'm excited to continue on with this series. Like I have a feeling this could potentially be one of my favorite series ever. But so far there's this feeling in me that like I'm missing something. So I feel like this is one of those books that I'm going to have to reread in order to like understand what I'm missing, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. So next I'd like to talk about City of Dragons and Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb. These are the third and fourth novels in the Rain Rod Chronicles. I actually finished these really early on in the month. I love the Realm of the Elder Links overall. And of course I love the Rain Rod Chronicles. I love like this area of the world in the Realm of the Elder Links is one of my favorites. I just really love the world building here. And and the ending to the Rainwell Chronicles was so good. Like, I really, really love the ending. The beginning was not my favorite, but I love the ending. Got back to some of those characters that I really, really enjoy. One of my favorite characters in the entire series is in here. And one of my favorite scenes from her is in these last two books also. So I really, really love that. And then you just get so much more of like the magical aspects of this world, I feel like in the Rainwall Chronicles than you do in any of the other series. So I ended up really, really loving it. I do have to say I was a little disappointed in the Rainwall Chronicles overall just because there wasn't quite the character development that I was hoping from them as you get in like some of her other books. There was just this promise of action in here that I didn't quite live up to what I was hoping it was going to do. But overall, I did really, really enjoy these and I ended up giving them 4.5 stars. Now we're going to move on to the, my five star books for the month. The first one that I want to talk about is Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King. This one caught me completely by surprise. I picked it up because it was one of the books that was on my book buying ban challenge and I ended up like finishing it the same day. I got so, so into the story. The main character just drew me in. I loved the voice of the story. His name's Lucky Linderman and his grandfather went missing in Vietnam and he's also being bullied at school to the point where it's not just like kids picking on him, like to the point where it's gotten physical. And so it's kind of with him trying to come to terms with things like that and coming to terms with like who his parents are and how his family situation is. It was just so moving to me and I really, really enjoyed it. This is one of those that like, I feel like I'll end up rereading multiple times just because like the way it was done, it wrapped it up in such an interesting way and I loved it. There is like slight magical realism aspects to this, which I also really, really enjoyed. The way it was done, so good. So I ended up giving this one five stars. Next, I wanna talk about The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson. This is the third book in the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. I loved it so much. I loved every second of this book. The audiobook for this one is so good. Like, love, love, love the production of the audiobook. The audiobook narrator is Simon Vance, who is one of the audiobook narrators that I mentioned in my favorite audiobook narrators video, which I'll link up in the cards in case you guys wanna check that out. Really, really loved this book. It was such a good ending to the series. Like, such a good ending. I just loved the way, like, it came back to the beginning and the situations that these characters are put in and all of that. Just, like, it came full circle and came back to the beginning. Oh, so, so well done. The plot is so well written and I love the themes and things that it explores in here. And the characters are just done in such a way that like they feel like real people, like the characters and the situations and all of that, they feel like real people and real situations that these characters could actually be in. They're like complex and emotional and mm, just loved everything about this book. The next book that I wanna talk about is The Lies of Lock Lamora by Scott Lynch. This book is such a good first book in a series. Like so so good this is like a high fantasy series also it is following the gentleman bastards which are thieves basically and one thing about this book is like it has a very narrow focus which i didn't know if i would like because i generally like really big worlds with fantastic world building and there is great world building in here it's just really narrow so it becomes really really detailed which I really enjoyed. I also really liked the way that this book is written because it's written kind of like at two times at once. So you're following the past when they were children and moving through their adolescence. And then you're following in the present time in which they're adults. And there's a lot of things happening 
in that time as well and I really enjoyed that and just the way those two stories were woven together was really really well done and I really really loved it and the ending oh the ending was so good I really enjoyed the ending and this is another one of them that like you guys know I'm all about the long game like I love it when authors set things up at the beginning for it to pay off at the ending and just mm, so so well done I actually want to reread this book first before I continue on with it I'm kind of weird about this sometimes where like I just like to live in a story before I get to the next one I think it started when I was younger when I would wait for like the next Harry Potter book I would reread the previous one over and over again until I got to the next one and by the time I got to the next one I knew that first book so well that the next one was just even better and I was just more prepared for it and I just want to know this book better if that makes sense like I want to reread it and love this book over and over again before I move on to the next book in this series and I feel like this is going to be a pretty long series as well and we're only on like book three now that's out so I feel like it's okay for me to reread this one a couple of times at least one more time before moving on to the next one so yes it's so good and I ended up giving it five stars and lastly probably my favorite book of the month is Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb and I'm actually also going to include Fool's Quest in this. I haven't actually finished Fool's Quest yet. I'm still currently reading it. There's a pretty good chance that I'll probably finish it before the end of the month. This is the first two novels in the Fits and the Fool trilogy. Oh my gosh, the Fits and the Fool trilogy is so good. I have a feeling that this trilogy is going to be like my favorite out of the entire Rem and the Elderling series, but honestly like I was pretty skeptical at the beginning of Fool's Assassin just because of the way it starts. It starts off really slow, which I guess all of Robin Hobb's books start out really slow, but this one just felt like extra slow to me. And I think part of the reason why is because I didn't realize that B, which is one of the other characters in this book, was also going to be like the main character of this series. I mean, yes, Fitz is the main character, but B is also like a pretty main character in this series. And it has some really good situations and really good revelations that I just, I love so much. And I've just like, I've gotten to know these characters so much that I just love every single one of them and what's happening. And oh, the ending of Fool's Assassin was just so good. Like the ending was, oh my gosh. It made me get super excited for Fool's Quest. And I, I'm loving Fool's Quest so far, like really, really loving it. And I can't wait for Assassin's Fate. Like, I can't wait for it. It's gonna be so good. I'm so excited for it. But yes, the ending, the ending here. Like, I usually don't like cliffhangers, but I'll take this cliffhanger. Like, it was such a good cliffhanger and the way that it was done, like, it didn't even make me angry. Mm, so, so good. Probably one of my favorite series of all time. So yes, really, really enjoyed it. Ended up giving it five stars. Well, ended up giving this one five stars. I'm still in the middle of this one, so we'll see but probably gonna be five stars also. Okay, so that is all I have for you guys. If you've read any of these books, let me know down in the comments because I would love to discuss it with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I post videos frequently on this channel, so consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.